Hello, everyone, and welcome to Ubuntu Voltage. Not Ubuntu <laughs> Podcast. Definitely not Ubuntu Podcast. Uh, no. My name's Alan. Welcome to uh, Ubuntu Voltage at Foss Talk Live 2021. And uh, I'm joined by the faces of some friends. Uh, hello, Mark. How are you doing? I'm quite warm. It is a bit warm, isn't it? What's going on? I know. I've been out in it today. Oh, dear. I've stayed inside, and I think Martin has also stayed inside, given that <laughs> he's been organising this thing. Uh, speaking of Martin, hello, Martin. How are you doing? Uh, I'm evaporating here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're joined by our special guest presenter, Stuart Langridge, from the cooler climbs of Birmingham. It's uh, nice and cool up there, is it, Stuart? No, no, it isn't. No, it's really hot the whole time, and I'm sick of it. Everyone's like, hooray, it's summer. You're like, shut up, dude. Just be quiet. Uh, it's hotter here than anywhere else in the country. 27 degrees it was today. In your flat? Wow. No, like in the world. The flat's about 47. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> uh, so um, we're going to have a slightly different uh, show than we normally do, uh, which, I mean, it's different in the way that it's different every time we do Foss Talk Live. Um, we we uh, decided to do something different from our normal Ubuntu podcast show. And uh, what we're doing is we've all decided to create something uh, much like we did in 2019. Um, and we've given ourselves a limitation. Um, I, I don't exactly know who came up with the limitation. Um, no, oh, I was Martin, was it? I, I couldn't remember either. I was trying to remember. So the limitation, I think if I look back in our Telegram channel, I can find the bit where Mark said, I'm certainly keen to do it. How about, and then this was the criteria, make a thing, program, game, hardware device, whatever, that is controlled by one button. Once your thing is running, it can only accept a single button with a pressed or not pressed state. This could be a physical button, a keyboard key, or a software UI button as input until it stops running, end quote. That's the criteria for what we had to make. Now, we don't know what each other made up until a couple of hours ago. Um, <laughs> some of us didn't finish until a couple of hours ago. <laughs> no, no, no. It, 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 it was looking, i got to say, at the beginning of this week, it was kind of touch and go. But <laughs> Yes. Uh, so uh, we're going to go round and each present a short video of our thing. We've pre-recorded the demos so that the uh, we, d we can appease the demo gods. Uh, and we will show you them, and then we'll have a little chat afterwards. And we'll go through each one of them. And then at the end, I'm going to post a poll on our Twitter account. That is at Ubuntu Podcast on our Twitter account. And you, dear listener, can vote for, for 10 minutes. So if you're watching this later, please don't phone in. Please do not vote later. It won't work. It only works now while you're watching this live, okay? Like, I'm watching a lot of Ant and Deck, you see. So, <laughs> so um, first up on the docket, I think, is... Martin, do you want to show us what you made? Oh, I do, although I've done a bad because I'm not prepared. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a Linux, lads, aren't you? <laughs> there we go. So um, I wanted to buy an NDI video encoder. And if you're not familiar with what NDI is, it can be simply described as HDMI over Ethernet. So it's a network protocol to move video over Ethernet. And in fact, I didn't just want one NDI encoder. I wanted three for the desk behind me. So uh, you can get these things on, um, on Amazon. Uh, and here's an example one. Around the back, HDMI in, Ethernet out, and it sends out the video stream of your NDI device that, you know, the, the feed that you've put into it. However, they are £500 each. And as I said, I wanted three. So that was a bit spendy. So then I had a think and I thought to myself, I could make one of these for myself. How hard could it be? So I took an old NUC I had on a shelf. Well, it's a 2015 NUC, an i7 NUC. And I took the motherboard out and I shoved it in this case from Acasa, which is a passively cooled case. So that now means that this thing runs completely silently. And then what I did is I installed Ubuntu Mate on it. <laughs> I already had the Magewell USB capture device that I bought many years ago. And I bought two more cheap HDMI uh, USB capture devices, plugged those into it. So I've now got three 
HDMI capture devices plugged into that device. And the two new ones I plugged my cameras into. You might be able to make out there's a rig of cameras over, behind my head. So then I thought this would be easy because I heard that FFmpeg had NDI support. So I went to go and do that only to discover that a couple of years ago, there was a rather acrimonious and public falling out between the FFmpeg developers and New Tech, the developers behind NDI. And NDI support was unceremoniously ripped out of FFmpeg. So two, two years ago, no NDI for you. I did a bit of hunting around, found that some clever individual is backporting the NDI support as patches into FFmpeg. So armed with this information, I did the first thing every Linux nerd does is I headed to Snapcraft and I made myself a snap of a custom build of FFmpeg with those NDI patches. So I've now got a very specific build of FFmpeg with current version of, N of FFmpeg with NDI support inside it. So this is my device and that is my single button uh, that I'm going to be using <laughs> and it's the power button. So <laughs> the question is what happens <laughs> when you push the power button? Well it turns the device on and it turns it off. My, my device is turn off and onable. Uh, that that is its sole purpose. <laughs> so, what happens when you push the power button? Uh, Ubuntu Mate boots. Um, the desktop is set to auto login, and then in the startup applications, it, it I've I've configured it to start these three NDI encoders, one for each of those uh, USB um, capture devices, and behind that, it's effectively doing this running a shell script called NDI encode <clears throat> and uh, then specifying which video device it should be capturing and encoding. And that video device path corresponds to, in fact, here's the shell script uh, that I, I made this. It's quality because shell <laughs> scripts. And um, it has a configuration file for the video device. So this is an example here. So you can give it a name, tell it some input characteristics. And if you want to like flip the video or anything like that, and it picks all of that up. And as a result, when the system boots, these three terminal windows appear, one for each of the video devices that you're capturing. And it is now automatically broadcasting over your network these video streams and what you can then do is you can go into obs and say add an ndi source and it will automatically discover those streams on the network and you can now ingest them into um, obs and use them as a regular video source so by doing this with some used parts i think i saved myself about 1,400 pounds. I spent like, a, like 120 quid on HDMI capture devices. And um, it looks a bit like this. So this is me. Hello. And if I just hit the wake up button on this camera here, there we go. So this is my desk here. Uh, this is the screen to my uh, Vic 20 here. And um, this is what I've been using to do my live streams. Um, so that's those three capture devices being pulled in live into uh, into OBS. And that's the thing that I made, which works with one button. I have to say, it was not entirely what I was thinking. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I mean, I expected something like, you know, a, a physical button. A physical button may be connected to some kind of Arduino that did like flashed an LED or yeah, but then this is you. <laughs> so it's the other end of the scale for pressing a button. <laughs> so so once your thing is running, if you if you press your one button, it it stops. That's what your it one button. It just turns does. the device off. <laughs> yeah. Grace graceful shutdown, it goes off, push the button, it comes up. And the reason the reason this one button operation was useful for me is when you're doing the live streams, you don't want a load of faff and setup. So literally I roll over there, hit the power button and I know all of that stuff is just going to work. You know, it's just on and off. It's great. Well, it's, it's like an got, appliance really, isn't it? It is. 
Well, it, you could that, say it's an IoT note, device. Yeah, maybe. Um, on that note, since it's um, a device with no user interface whatsoever, why the heck in Hecatash is it running Ubuntu Mate desktop? <laughs> why is it I running a explain. desktop at all? <laughs> so it has it has one other feature which I haven't explained <gasps> here from is there this a machine. For that, I'm is there a no, no, no. <laughs> secret from, button around the back. I bet. From here, do not press. <laughs> from here, I can send an NDI feed of what I'm sending out to my live stream. And when I do that, it automatically appears as a window over there. So when I'm live streaming from that desk and building computers, I can see uh, like a representation of the live stream live in front of me. So that's why it runs a desktop. So I've got so like a on. video monitor. As well as, so as well as responding to a button, it also responds to this special command. No, it's not a c- command. It's um, an autom- It's a uh, Avahi or automatic network discovery. Oh, it just see- you're not sees it on the network. I was determined to disqualify this entry. So. I, I, I feel like it'd be so brilliant if he does all this and then we go, now because it's actually got two buttons. <laughs> no, <laughs> no it's count. all automatic. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not an idiot. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> okay, so that's our first uh, hardware entrant into this. Uh, remember, for those joining just now, we're going to have a poll later where you can vote which is the best we're not going to give you a criteria you just get to pick one uh next up mark how about you introduce what you did go on then martin take it away okay so this is not my thing this is the game that inspired my thing this is a game called crypt of the necro dancer where you explore a dungeon by moving up down left and right but you have to move to the beat of the music so if you randomly mash the button it doesn't move you have to time each time you press your button to the beat of the music which goes with the soundtrack of the game which you're hearing now and is pretty cool Uh, as you explore the dungeon you find enemies and they each have a dance and the dancers have different rhythms depending on the different enemies you've got to learn the dance so that you know how to safely attack and kill uh, each enemy Uh, you have to attack them basically when they're passive so i was playing this and i thought well what if instead of moving in four directions you could only move in one direction well then you'd only need one button Um, so that takes me on to my game which you'll see in a minute um, the first thing you'll notice is it's quite a lot simpler than Net the dance because i'm not really a game developer nor am i an artist so i decided i would concentrate on making the game work rather than how it looked at first um, so this is written in javascript it's running in a web browser and i will in fact post a link in the chat um, if you want to go and play this afterwards Um, But this grey rectangle here is your character. That red dot is the beat indicator, and this is the corridor that you're moving down. Uh, So to play, you press a key, and it starts playing a beat. Um, In this version, it sounds extremely dull. Um, And then you have to keep pressing your button in time with the beat. Um, And as you do so, you move along the corridor. There we go. Um, If you just randomly press the button, not in time with the beat, you don't move. Uh, and um, that's basically all of the actions that you have. Um, I was a bit lazy because I didn't uh, bind the action to a particular key, uh, so it works with any key, but there is only one action. So um, basically, you're only moving right. Um, So originally, I tried to do this by having the web page play an MP3 of something like a metronome where I knew the number of beats per minute, uh, and then I would, like, when the user pressed a button i would try and tell if that track was where a beat would be but the um the events in javascript which tell you where a track uh, is um are really inaccurate and there was no way of me reliably telling if you were pressing it on the beat or not so what i had to do was use a library called tone js which is for sequencing audio to actually live synthesize um the beat uh, and that way i when it plays you can uh you can tell if you've pressed the button at the same time. So here is the uh, the finished version. You can see it looks a little bit different. The beat indicator is now green. Um, I did wonder about doing some sort of uh, pixel art sprites like Crypto the Necro Dancer, but then once I started playing it with the abstract shapes, I realized it felt kind of a bit like the game Thomas Was Alone, um, and that won a BAFTA, so I thought <laughs> I'd keep it. <laughs> 
so as before, <laughs> you press a button to start the beat going. This time, I've actually got um, a drum beat. I've, I've got drum samples, and I've sequenced them into an actual drum beat, which actually I found makes it a lot easier to play. And then again, you move along in time with the beat. Da, 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 da. Here we go. Ah, and it also gives you feedback if you press it too soon or too late, which one it was. So these uh, blobs are your enemies, and each of them has a different sequence. They pulse in time with the beat, but some of them go red on certain beats. So you've got to learn the sequence of each one. The blue one uh, is always safe, so you can always just jump onto the blue one whenever you hit the beat. Uh, the yellow one is uh, safe three beats out of four. The purple one is safe one beat out of four. Um, and yeah, these are just, um, yeah, each one can have its own sequence defined just as a list of safe and unsafe sequence, which it then cycles around each time there's a beat. Um, if you don't get it on the right beat, you get knocked back, um, which you've probably just seen, or you might see again in a minute because uh, I'm not very good at my own game yet. And <laughs> I decided not to put on the cheat mode. So, um, And the big blue guy here is the boss. So he's got a slightly more complex sequence. Um, and uh, when you win. I think Mark will reappear automatically. There we go. Hello. Did you hear that? <laughs> no. no. When you oh, win. Okay. Not, not, not. So, yes. So, yeah, here we go. When you win, um, you get a score, and that is based on the length of the level, the number of times you hit or miss the beat, um, which calculates your overall accuracy, the number of times you took damage from enemies, uh, and that um, maths together to um, to give you your total <laughs> score. Um, yeah, so this is all. Uh, all you're seeing here is um, SVG and uh, CSS on a web page, which handles all of the display and animation, and that's about it. And I'll stick nice. a link in the chat on YouTube if you want to go and play it. Is minus 12 a good score? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a score. Um, so I think I think a perfect score would be three times the number of rooms in the level. That's if you got it absolutely ooh, spot on. But then it okay. depends because, yeah, well, anyway, something like that. It starts off, you, you start off with four times the number of rooms in the level in points, and then it deducts. Uh, for every beat that goes past and then it um, modifies that when you take damage and if you're inaccurate um does it work on um, mobile devices or is it only bound to keyboard presses uh it's oh it, it listens for the key press event so you could use a soft keyboard um what you mean a usb keyboard or no uh, keyboard? i mean i mean a, a an on-screen keyboard they right. wouldn't uh, but the on-screen keyboard wouldn't pop up Oh, well. It, it okay. the, it, 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 it it's it on the GitHub. Screen. File a bug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it, 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 welcome. It's it. Yeah, it's on GitHub. Also, bind it to on touch, and then right. you find. Ah, yes. Okay. <laughs> That's not a button, though, is it? I don't know. I I I feel like after this, you're allowed to turn it into a, a real <laughs> game that ends up on Steam, <laughs> and slightly alter the rules if you like. Yeah. Fair point. <laughs> Uh, how how long did it take you to put together? Do you think? Oh, um, I'd say in total probably hmm, twelve hours working on it. And the hardest any, bit like, was gone. Well, so so the hardest bits were working out how to actually um, how to actually sync up and get it so that I can tell whether you press the button on the beat or mm. not. And the other thing was getting all that animation working smoothly and in sync. Was there like libraries to do that? Because that's, in my mind, that's the hardest thing. So how did you achieve that? So so get it, so um, syncing up the 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 beat with the key press is just um, when the loop in Tone JS is on the beat. I have it emit an event to say it's the beat now, and then I listen for that in JavaScript and apply a class or set a flag or whatever. And then the animation is all just done with CSS. So I tell everything where it needs to be and then say, and transition between those states. And then I just remove and add classes or numbers of elements. And then all of the animation happens. I didn't actually have to code any animation. Something um, that might be worth looking at is if you use the web audio API to do this, then you can get really accurate timing out of it, which would probably help with the bait stuff. Yeah. I will look at that. 
<laughs> he lied. Uh, no. Do you think you would? Um, oh, it, it, yeah. I'm gone. Joking. I'm joking. <laughs> no, uh, no, that was a real question. I was going to ask. Are you going to keep doing this? Ah, um, like, I have some ideas for refinements and for additional features. Like I was thinking, maybe you could have enemies that try and attack you, and you can hold down the button um, to block. And so you have to block in time with them attacking and then attack them back. That might be a fun thing to try and add. And also just actually trying to put some design into the levels and the layout of enemies. <laughs> so that affects like to see if you could just have a perfect run where you mash it exactly in time. And if you get that first time, you get a straight run through the level. But if you mess it up, it makes it more difficult to then carry on like that. I, could, I feel it I, could be a, a fun like speed run thing to try and like, that, yeah. nail the beats like properly and get through to the end and get like a perfect score yeah i, Minus I, one I, I think it'd be cool is if you were if you were going into the screen rather than across it so it's 3d <laughs> so so it would end up looking a bit like a guitar hero or something like that you know but, oh, in I reverse. See what you mean. but yeah awesome okay uh remember you'll be able to vote at the end of this i'll put a link in the chat a bit later uh next up uh Stuart has oh, a up, creation to show us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Oh dear. <laughs> Explain yourself, Mr. Language. Well, um, so uh, the music should have just got a little bit quieter. So I, I, I love the music to bits. It's uh, it's an Incompetech thing, like all the music for all the games on the internet, and that's really cool. So um, as you saw from the intro, what you've got here is um, the members of the Ubuntu podcast are flinging things at you in, att- in an attempt to kill you. So Martin throws expensive GPUs at you, and Popey throws think pads at you. Oh, crap, I <laughs> that um, pile of components is a ThinkPad. <laughs> well, that's what happens when um, uh, the ThinkPad smashes into the ah. camera. It disintegrates into a big pile of um, components, you see. Um, and Mark throws um, those teacher hats because he works on Moodle all the time. <laughs> and it's the Moodle logo, which I didn't know until I looked it up. Um, but you can protect yourself by collecting things. So um, there, if you collect that little picture of a Bitcoin, which represents crypto nonsense in general, then that uh, stops Popey from throwing things at you. And if you watch him, you see his little frowny face. Um, I just got hit by one of Martin's GPUs again. Um, so I'm not actually very good at this game. The, um, the one button push, it's like... Snake, the snake, except you can only turn left. Right? <laughs> so so you, you only turn in one direction. But you can collect, um, so you can collect things. Um, as I say, if you collect uh, Bitcoins, it protects you from Popey. Really, really, really expensive GPUs protect you from Martin. <laughs> and bathroom stuff protects you from Mark after having listened to him on the Ubuntu podcast for two years go on about his bathroom stuff being his nemesis. <laughs> so, um, uh, and you can also, uh, there are two other things you can collect. Um, so you just saw there, just collecting a toilet to protect you from Mark. And look, Mark looks sad. Um, there are two other things you can collect. One of the things you may see, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to come up now, is uh, the uh, Late Night Linux logo, of which they've been look, talking about changing because it's rubbish. But this is um, uh, the, the, the little penguin sitting on a moon. And if you collect that, then you go really, really slow for a bit. Um, presumably because you're busy testing some random Linux distribution or something um, or arguing about Brexit um, or you can collect a bad voltage logo if I can get one to come up I'll tell you please there's, there's the logo like, see, I just died immediately are they um, as rare <laughs> as bad voltage listeners Oh, I, I mean, I suppose I can't really complain at you having a go because I made a whole game about you having a go. <laughs> so, um, the bad the bad voltage logo protects you from everybody, and you get this cool um, uh, striped screen. There's a logo. It looks like there's a bad voltage logo. Go on, no, I missed it. Um, so there are there. Go on, yeah. You oh, see? I see. I yeah, see you see, it's all three dimensional. It took ages to make that work. <laughs> 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 so um uh long time uh studiers of games that i have built will be possibly asking the question at this point is Stuart ever going to get bored with the idea of when you die it prints up some really big words of something that sounds like your parents being angry with you and the answer is no no i'm never going to get bored with that <laughs> um so that's i haven't got a name for it and i'd love 
a name for this game. I mean, I'm not going to release it or anything, at least partially because if you don't have the screen exactly the right size, all the writing's too big. But <laughs> um, I'd love... I'd love a, a name for it. I'm, I, what I was debating doing, I discovered that you can do games on Telegram. Uh, we went through, uh, people who are in the Ubuntu podcast channel may remember, mm. uh, a couple of years ago, we discovered that you could do this and everyone spent two days um, playing this game where you had to chop down a tree and get points. <laughs> um, and I thought, hey, I could do that because the game works on the web. Mark, you could do the same thing. And my original plan was to get it wired up in the Telegram channel for today. But then, as I say, this has been uh, getting this put together in time for this has been something of race. And at the moment, um, I don't even know if it works in a browser that isn't Firefox. I do know that if you make the screen any size other than the size I had it, it doesn't work properly. <laughs> so um, uh, not ready for public consumption. Yes. Where but. do your artistic skills come from for the creation of the uh, the characters and uh, the game art and stuff? Do you do all uh, that yourself? Well, sort of. So um, the the pictures of you, uh, you three, I fed in some kind of online caricature-y thing. <laughs> Um, <laughs> headshots of each of the three of you which um it then gave me back which is why one of you's a um a cowboy and one of you's a gangster or something so it's like um you know the things you get at the seaside the big wooden boards where you can stick your head through a hole and then you're you're a cowboy or something like that it was something like that but online um the uh the the brick the bricks on the side wall are um textures you know, um, the astronaut was a blender file and the other, the, uh, and the GPU was a blender thing. And, uh, well, all of, all of the things you can collect as blender stuff, the, um, the Linux logo I drew, um, <laughs> I, I modeled in blender. Um, <laughs> what? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All this stuff. I individually modeled it in blender and then rendered, um, the whole rotation as a proper 3d fly around thing. It took ages, man. <laughs> believe how hard it was i now know loads more about blender than i did before it's very exciting um go ahead martin so there are requests to see the very beginning of Stuart's presentation so are you able to pause <laughs> uh, no i may uh, if i just go back here it will play the, the intro of Stuart's game so as it's being asked for we'll just run those few moments <laughs> okay. here it is again everyone <laughs> <laughs> what, what have I got my foot up on a crater? <laughs> like, like, like I say, that was um, this, the caricature thing. Was, um, if you've got the music playing, it'll be really loud at the moment. So Yeah, um, I've I've just moved <laughs> it away. There we go. Um, there we go. Yeah, so, so this caricature thing, it just had that. And at first I thought, oh no, because it's picked a bunch of random bodies falling. And I was like, oh, that's actually hilarious. I'm keeping that. So... <laughs> <laughs> so would you would you um make this available on on itch.io or something or do the technical limitations because it was done in a hurry that you know you've got it, it only works in certain browsers at certain resolutions and stuff i uh, i mean i could do i uh, i don't think it would take uh long to trick it up into something actually workable and worthwhile and most of it's there um i feel like it has a limited amount of audience appeal since pretty much <laughs> everyone on earth who would find this game funny is currently watching the stream. Yeah. But, I think you have um, a point. Um, so, uh, and I feel like if you turned it into a game which wasn't basically having a dig at everyone else who does podcasting other than us, then um, people would go, but this isn't actually that good a game. <laughs> and, that, <laughs> and they would say things, and they would say things like, what's the character's motivation in this scene? Like, why is he an astronaut? <laughs> um, and, and why are Mark and Alan and Martin attempting to prevent you from going down a brick line corridor into space? And, <laughs> and, I, and then I would have to say, why have you got to ask so many damn questions? <laughs> Shut up. Very fair. Very and the, fair. Answer, the answer is I would not know. Um, but uh, I, I mean, I, c I could do. And if people show a whole bunch, I mean, maybe if I win the competition, then I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I see. <laughs> Speaking of winning the competition, uh, I'll be tweeting out the um, the poll shortly. Uh, while we'll have a little discussion, while you get an opportunity to vote, and yes. the four of us are banned from retweeting it, so we can't brigade. Oh, the, yeah, oh. 
That's um, not fair. That seems it's fair. For people watching, we're doing this for the Foss Talk Live audience. Not yeah, for that's, your that, 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 that's Let me just fair. add. So I will go retweet it from the Bad Voltage account, though. I'm assuming that's allowed. <laughs> oh, 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 are you going to claim that? I mean, it, just have the Samantha tweet it then rather than the Ubuntu podcast account and then see how many people vote. <laughs> well, okay. more, more than the Bad Voltage podcast oh, account. Now, now, now. Right. Oh, Getting back um, on topic. Um, now, <laughs> as I switch to Alan's uh, presentation, the URL for the Twitter account is there. So get logged into Twitter now so you're ready when Alan makes it all live after his presentation, which is coming up now. So I made a Drift, which is a prototype single button game. It's written in Blitzmax, which is a five, last release was five years ago, uh, but a new release was made last year. You hold space to navigate this menu, and then you tap space in order to go into the menu. This is the settings menu. Uh, there's also an about page where we describe that you are Captain Vu of the Ungulate Tub, a lightweight transport ship lost in space. Most of the ship's critical functions are failing. You're left with one command system mapped to the space key to control repair systems, weapons, and recharge your shields, then eventually jump into light speed. You're being chased by the Lacranix Marauders, who must be destroyed for you and your squad to survive. Protect the ship, save the crew, crush the enemies, and hopefully light jump home. Uh, that little last bit I got a bit from, you know, wash your hands, uh, hands face space. <laughs> uh, so this is the game, and if we pause it here, down the bottom of the screen uh, is all the gauges for the things you can control, weapons, engines, and shield and hull. Uh, and on the right hand side is your control wheel and you hold down space to charge it up and then let go to choose either weapons, engines, shields or hull. Um, at the top, there's the time uh, zero uh, ATU. ATU is arbitrary time units. I couldn't think of something. <laughs> um, we're currently in wave one of the enemies and the next wave comes at five arbitrary time units. Your ship is in the middle of the screen, and when I unpause it, you'll see all of the things will start to decay because your ship is falling apart. You can see them all dropping. And the only control you have is to hold the space bar. I've just paused it again because there's an alien coming in. These are the Lacronix Marauders. And um, you'll notice that all of the dials have dropped a little bit. Um, and if they get to zero, if the hull gets to zero or life gets to zero, you're dead because the ship has broken apart or the life support system is busted and that you, it kills everyone. If the shield gets too low, then the hull starts to deteriorate faster. If engines get too low, then they all start to deteriorate because power drives everything. If the weapons get too low, then you can't fire the weapons. So you have to kind of balance charging each of these up. And you can only charge one at a time by holding down the space bar to charge the red charge wheel. And if I... Uh, I can fire the weapons, and you can see it fires out a weapon that kills the aliens. And you'll notice the wheel is climbing. That's me holding down the space bar to charge up. And wherever I let go, it charges up, in that case, energy. This one, it's going to go keep going past. The next one is shield. You'll notice shield is pretty low. And notice the hull is going down fast because shield is at zero. So I recharge the hull, and then I'm going to charge up a bit further on uh, shield, I think because the hull still deteriorates because the shield is so low. The further up you go in the quadrant, the higher the amount of charge you get for that thing you're selecting. Um, there's a couple of extra bonuses. Like if you can manage to get the engines all the way to the top, uh, the engines up to 100%, then you get a bit more life back. Um, there's The collision detection is a little bit rubbish. There's no sound effects. Uh, there's no explosions. Um, it's a bit rubbish, but it's really just a prototype to see if this whole holding down space thing could work as a control scheme for managing uh, the things down the bottom of the screen. Now, you'll notice the hull is is dropping slowly, and I'm intentionally letting go of the space bar so that it kind of drops. I can. You'll notice also the health bar above the aliens. Uh, it sometimes takes multiple hits, uh, and the, the, the later waves take more and more hits to kill them. You'll notice... Uh, engines is so low, everything's dropping. And once everything starts dropping, it's it's really terrible. So you have to be on top of all of them. And now it's game over because life hit zero. So life support is, is out and all your crew is dead, which is one of the mission parameters that you have is to keep them alive. But if the hull had gone to zero, then the ship would have been destroyed and thus the <laughs> crew would have been destroyed, which is <laughs> the other mission parameter is keep the ship intact. Um, and that's that's my little game.
called Adrift. Wow. Okay, so uh, a point of clarification. I think a couple of people missed how do you navigate the menus? Uh, you just hold down the space button to move through the menus in the in the main menu or within yeah the, in the main menu in the main menu you just hold down right. space and it moves through them and then you just tap so hold down you. space to toggle your position yeah, and then to, tap to, 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 to activate the yeah thing like every quarter on. of a second it moves to the next the next also, option also everyone on the whole entire internet has asked how you pause it uh well which i only which... added the pause so that i could pause it <laughs> yeah. and explain it for this video yeah the pause uh, so I, is not uh, part of the game I think I, I think I think that's fine. Having, having a having meta buttons, um, right? The don't mean, actually change the game. I think he's reasonable. There are also buttons where I, which I was using during testing, where I can hold the state of all of the gauges just to see the aliens coming in. And I've got another button that lets me recharge them all back up to one hundred percent. But that's just for me to debug. Those yeah. are not mm-hmm. supposed um, to be in the game. Uh, do do you have to shoot the aliens, the Lucronics invaders? Yeah, yeah. Well, because they don't seem to do anything to you. They, just they haven't drift yes, past. That is an <laughs> unimplemented feature uh, for the ah. minimum viable product. I don't yet have uh, the aliens shooting back. Um, yes, Mark. D- there's like a particular order. Like you have to hold down space for a lot longer to be able to recharge the engines than you do the weapons. Mm. Have you put a lot of thought into the order that they're set, or is that just what you did for now and you'd refine it later? Uh, so there's a lot of balancing that needs doing, like yeah. the speed at which they decay and the speed and the, when the waves come and the speed at which the aliens come. And there's there's a whole load of balancing to do. I did um, initially show it to the kids, and it was Sam's idea to put them in that particular order he said the mm-hmm. one that you know you're is most important the 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 hull put at the end and mm-hmm. you have to and you, i don't know if you noticed but it actually got slower to go round the dial the further mm-hmm. round you went mm-hmm. oh, i was i was going to ask about that because i did notice it but i thought is this because he's got all the trig wrong or is it meant to be <laughs> no it's, that's no, it's slightly <laughs> elastic isn't it yeah. yeah it's proportional and actually as it gets towards 100 it gets really painfully slow <laughs> <laughs> it's really quite frustrating so yeah so it was also asked how did you come up with the names for your alien characters <laughs> so uh captain vu uh, the ungulate tub uh, if you take those letters, it's uh, Ubuntu Voltage. Ubuntu Voltage. Oh, I, 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 I got, I got that one. Um, and the Lacronix Marauders is an anagram of uh, Arch Linux. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get that one. I got the ungulate tub thing. I, I have a feeling that everyone was pressing X to doubt over the pause key, but I think. <laughs> Those explanations may just swing it in your favor. <laughs> I'll happily remove the pause key from the game. That's just, you know, I didn't, I, yeah. The only reason that pause was there was just so I could demonstrate it to you. Cause what I didn't want to do is try and explain it while all the dials were moving and aliens were coming in and all that kind of stuff. So, so um, someone's also question? asked, could you, could you just clarify what you made it with? Ah, I used a programming language from the past called Blitz Max, uh, which um, is free software. Uh, you can get it from blitzmax.org. Uh, it was forked, and it's now called Blitz Max NG, which is the new version. And it's on GitHub. It's free software, um, and it's designed for making games. And it's it's got a long lineage all the way back to the Commodore Amiga. I was, um, was going to say, this this NG version is like Star Trek NG, and then it's from about 1992. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, but it's good though. Thank you. Uh, um, how did you, how did you uh, how did you find building it in this? Because I mean, building some uh, an actual real game in something like Blitz Max that sounds like a lot of work. But was it not? I don't no, really know. No, there's like a single command for loading a sprite, and a single command for putting the sprite on the screen, and a single command uh, for loading right. audio, and a single command for playing the audio and pausing the audio and playing it again. Like when you pause the game, I pause the audio, and then. The only audio in the game is, um, I have to thank Joe Ressington for this, is the Sox audio generator thing that plays space. Um, so space, noise. yeah, space wind. White like noise. Ball. Yeah, that's yeah. the only noise in it. And I, all I did was do socks and then take the WAV file and load it into the game and play it on a loop. Right, I need to send the tweet out. Uh, right. So you've seen all four of our, uh, our uh, creations. Um, I'm going to tweet now. Uh, you have 10 minutes, and I'm going to um, unpin the previous thing that we had pinned, and I'm going to pin this. Uh, and so if you were to go to this link, if nobody's done it already, 
It's in the chat. Uh, there you go. I haven't voted, uh, <laughs> but feel free to vote. Um, you, say it's, you say it's in the chat. There we go. In YouTube, yes. Yes, there we go. Uh, so, uh, any further questions from the audience, or uh, do we have any other questions to ask each other? Martin, would you, your hardware one, yep. um, is this like fixed in stone now? This is an appliance that you're just going to press a button, turn on, and turn off after a while, and then, you know, you're, you're done. Or are, it's you, its are you going purpose. to work more on it? No. Uh, well, the there's a protocol called NDI NX, which is designed to work over Wi-Fi, and it basically shoves uh, H.264 video over the NDI protocol, uses NDI as the transport. And I don't know enough about how that works, but I'd like to get that to work because it's very bandwidth intensive, the whole NDI thing. I should also add, questions such as this and a deeper dive will be coming up in the next two Ubuntu podcast episodes, which we're rebranding for two episodes only <laughs> as Ubuntu Voltage. So, oh, this is yeah, fast. Fast. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly happy with that. Cool. Um, Mark, do you think um, this is a stepping stone to you creating more things in javascript specifically games would you would you see this as a a creative endeavor that you would see pursuing that's a very good question i've never because i only really think about writing games when we do a thing like this well in <laughs> particular because that's what makes me think about you know an interesting mechanic or something like that um I don't know what else I would do, but I would certainly, now I've got this bit working, I'd certainly be interested in exploring it further. And actually the the way of like displaying stuff and animating it with CSS um, was like, I, I've, I've tried to learn game engines and I just, I have like a mental block, but because I already know JavaScript, I know how to display stuff and move it around. It, it's like a really quick way to get started. And then I can focus on actually writing a game. Right. So I could, if I had another idea, I would probably do it the same way that I did this one. I identify completely with that. I feel the same way about Bash. <laughs> I, so it, it, it's 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 what I think. Too. I mean, mine's CSS as well. It's um, it's all it's all individual HTML things. It does all the three D stuff mm. um, that way. So everything's translated into the screen. I know, Stuart, you've made a few games before, and I know you've participated in a couple of game jams. I have uh, the um. There was a the, Nokia the one. Low, the low res jam and the Nokia 3310 <laughs> game jam. How did, ah, how did this snake. experience of the Ubuntu Voltage jam, shall we call it, uh, <laughs> how did this compare to doing things probably on a shorter time scale, I would imagine, the other ones? Um, yeah, well, the others, because they're game jams, they tend to be, you know, do the whole thing in a weekend or whatever. Um, the thing which made this one a lot more time pressure is that... Um, I wasn't going to do this idea at all. I was going to do something <laughs> completely different. Um, and I got most of it built. And then you lot went, well, we should do videos of this rather than actually doing the game live. So I had to completely throw the idea away and do something totally different. <laughs> so I, I was going to do a different thing to start with. I had something completely different in mind, neither of which suited a video presentation, as you will note from the fact that I did <laughs> yeah. slides. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, w I will talk more about um, that um, in the in the show i think yeah I, um, we'll dig into that because so. I, I think that'd be interesting to go into but yeah I, I this has been really interesting i like the fact that um a bunch of us went for games i mean i did think about should i do something real but realistically no one actually builds a thing which is only controllable with, by one button unless that's an intentional constraint for fun well like accessibility I mean, could, is another reason mm-hmm uh, yes okay you could build that but i don't necessarily feel qualified to speak to how someone who only has one button to operate something what they would actually want out of a thing and going well i think you'd need this they go did you want no idea <laughs> but actually, that, was, that, was, that was one of the things that made writing a game interesting to me because i i had to think well if you've only got one button what's challenging about just pressing one button and that's what got me on to beat matching because timing right. is one of that... the things that's challenging about it that's, so like Flappy Bird in that respect. <laughs> yeah, you've yeah. got, got to get it absolutely bang on right. Uh, right. That was, yeah, because I mean, Popey, look at yours. I, um, if we ignore the 
crazy menu navigation thing. <laughs> What's like, crazy about it? You just hold the button down and it goes through. Literally, and then you every, let go. every, everyone in the chat was going, well, as you control the menus then, they explained it, they're like, Really? That's nuts. It says along the but, bottom of the screen. Yeah. It says in big letters, hold space to, ne- to move to the next option. But, Tap space to select. <laughs> but your model... Look, there, right there. Yeah, on the screen. I know, fair enough. It does actually say that. I'll give you that. Oh, wait. But, escape but, exits. Escape quits oh. the game. Like, <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. Well, that You're way. not even that, in the game, then. That seems reasonable. Like, Mark, when you get to the end of yours, how do you make it play the game again? Uh, Is the answer you hit control R? <laughs> So shush. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the only reason I know that is because that's what mine does as well. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I saw Mark click the refresh button in the browser. <laughs> <laughs> you massive cheat. That, oh, oh, dear. oh, there's a backlash about the escape key in the chat. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, when I stipulated, you know, uh, I think in the description you read, I said once once the <clears throat> thing is running, it only responds to one button. Yeah, I I would have accepted navigating the menu to start the game as before the thing is running. I, I to be honest with you, yeah. If, I mean, you'd have had to talk a bit fast to justify it, but after some righteous hazing, you'd have probably got away with yeah. You could use <laughs> the na- use the. <laughs> to be fair, I wrote the menu. Case. The very first thing I wrote was the star field. And then the very next thing was the menu. And once I figured out that it was possible to detect when someone's holding the button down and how long for and setting a target, I was like, okay, this is possible. So the menu was done first. And then when I did start game, I then had to rewrite that completely (laughs) because the mechanic in the game is not the same. You don't hold it down to choose something and then tap to select. Uh... It's the other way around. You tap to fire the weapon and you hold it down to charge up. And that'd be super duper confusing. Right. Actually, yeah. Wow. So, um, how, how many minutes how, left do we got? I could say how, we've got, I don't we've know got how two long minutes we've got. left. Two minutes left. Okay. okay. Um, so, uh, is it is it hidden from us because we're not allowed to see? I think. Uh, well, I, say, well, I, I just mean, thought it suspense. I mean, I mean, anyone that knows the URL is probably <laughs> mashing the F five button in anticipation. <laughs> I am not. I'm just or, waiting to see what happens in two new minutes' time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Just to vote on this. One, one of our rules of engagement is we're not allowed to vote. So mine's you know. got built a program with one button, and when he presses the button, it registers a new Twitter account and votes on the poll. <laughs> 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 would you? Would you? Um, if you were going to do another one of these, would a single button thing, if it was a criteria, would it be something that attracted you or not, based on your experience of doing this thing? Short answers. I wanted yes. to make. I, I want to make the thing that I originally wanted to make, which was another hardware device with a single button. But not not just turning it on, but turning it on, turning it off, and whilst it was on, that button operating it, it as well. Yeah. All right, you Mark. Yeah, I'd I'd be you know I'd be interested to come up with another thing that's challenging about pressing one button. Yeah, I think it, the the constraints. That, like even the, the in the past, the game we did in 2019 with the bat, we we're using bash. Yeah, that was yeah. a good constraint. I I know Martin blew it out the water, but <laughs> you know, it's it's still a constraint. You know, you're not going to get like super high res video on it. Yeah. Um, what about you, Stuart? Would you do another? Would you do a game jam that had single button or limited I control? Mean, I might do. Part of the problem with it is because it is it is constrained, and constraints are the mother of invention and all that. But it's also very contrived. Um, yeah. which means that um, I don't have all that much spare time in my life. So it would be quite nice if I wrote a thing and then it actually became like a cool thing once it was done. Right. And I don't know how useful a one button game is. I mean, some of them are, you know, there's, there's loads and loads of mobile games, which are one tap on the screen, flappy bird, all those things, yeah. where a ninja climbs up walls or whatever. And they're fun, but I don't know. I mean, maybe something a bit less constraining, <laughs> like the bash thing, that no one will have any idea that anti alien attack was written in bash. No, I mean, no, immediately because it took Martin six months. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, okay. I think we need to bring the uh, poll up on screen because we're running out of time here. We'll mash the over. refresh button. There we go. And oh gosh, well, Ooh. Alan's run away oh, with it. Oh, look, look at there. that. Yeah, I think yeah. that's well deserved. Personally, thank you. Yeah, I played. Well that. done. Um, do you know what? I am so glad that's over. 
<laughs> you know, I love Blitz Basic, but I'm not touching it again for a while. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> that, well, congratulations. Uh, thank you. I think that is well deserved. So uh, thank you all for listening and watching and taking part in the vote if you did. Uh, we will be uh, talking a little bit more about this and some other things on the Ubuntu podcast, which will go out on Thursday this week and every week, of course. Uh, Stuart, are you joining us for this week's uh, episode? I, w- I will happily join you for um, the next episode to talk about this. And that would be lovely. Thank you. And that's all for us on Ubuntu Voltage. And uh, next up is the new show the new show thanks all thanks guys see you soon cheers thanks for watching everyone bye bye good night